Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Game. Today we're going to be having a quick look at Xenocide, which is a top-down shooter by a studio called Confused Genius. It's a top-down shooter, so it shouldn't take too much to understand what's going on, right? You should certainly think so. Alright, we'll dive into the single player right here. It does have local co-op. And our 15 minutes of game begin now. Alright. Ooh. You know, one of these weapons is a blunderbuss by the looks of it. it. They claim that's a rifle. That's clearly not a rifle. That's obviously a blunderbuss. You know, we're going to go with the shotgun here. And we have a minigun, laser gun. Yeah, let's go with the minigun. There we go. Also, some available power-ups that we can choose from various tiers by the looks of it. Alright. Weapon modification. Sure, why not? What else? Hmm, charge. Mortar strike, that sounds useful. Fire bullets. Electric bullets. Yeah, chain, we like that. And then you can pick tier two. Let's see, uh, life leech, that sounds good. And probably an area healing. And tier three. Obviously, we've got to pick the nuke. I mean, what else would we choose? All right, let's dive in, shall we? So that's the UI. Those are the controls. Pretty simple. Nothing really complicated about any of that. All right, here we go then. Well, a fairly simplistic looking game. But hey, you know, I've played games like... Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that was a tad pointless. I didn't blow up anything with it, but hey. I've played games like... Nation Red. I've played games like Crimson Land. So, I'm not averse to these sort of arena score attack shooters, assuming they're well put together. That's the grenade button right there. It's a case of trying to keep you interested for longer than a couple of minutes. Because if something... Oh, wow. Okay, now that's firing pretty quickly. These kind of things can become very, very boring really, really easily if they're not done correctly. The way that Nation Red did it well is to consistently give you a huge selection of weapons and power-ups. It actually didn't let you pick a loadout before you started, but it spawned all sorts of crazy things, and you could unlock new stuff as you went through, so it did keep things fairly interesting. Alright, so the power-ups activate pretty much automatically, so you've got to be a little bit careful about when you pick them up. Let's see, can I switch weapon? Q is switch weapon, right? That's the minigun, okay. There we go. Which is kind of what you would expect. Can't say I'm massively impressed by the sound assets or anything along those lines. Okay, there's a drone for some reason. I suppose we are killing aliens, so seeing robotic drones is not all that unusual. Some of these games have a problem of just throwing random enemies at you that don't really fit in thematically. So far, I suppose you can get away with most of this on the rather played out assertion that it's an alien invasion so yeah they can do pretty much anything right i gotta admit i am getting a little bored already i've played some really good games in this genre and so far there's not really a huge amount to convince me that this is one of them I mean, the first problem I think I've got with it is that it has a loadout system for power-ups. I mean, why would you intentionally restrict the amount of power-ups that are available to the player in the game? Wouldn't that make the game more repetitive? Wouldn't that make the game less interesting? I mean, surely it would. What would be the purpose of that? I suppose it's supposed to give you a feeling of customization. I wonder if you can unlock more power-ups. I certainly hope so. If you can't, if they unlock everything from the start, then you're severely limiting the amount of replayability the game has because some people really like that progression and feeling like they've unlocked a new power-up every time is something that keeps people playing longer. And the movement system is fairly basic. That dodge is really weird. I mean, you'd expect a roll or something along those lines, but... It's just kind of jets to one side. It's like if he was wearing a jetpack or something, I could kind of understand that. But it doesn't make a great deal of sense that I could suddenly leap 20 feet that way out of bloody nowhere. And you've already seen sort of all the power-ups that this level has to offer. I mean, hell, considering the drop rate, you can experience all the power in about a minute's worth of gameplay. So at that point, you're sort of asking yourself, well, where's the bloody rest of it? That's why I'm hoping that future levels might offer something different. Not particularly tricky so far either. I'm not really paying much attention to what I'm doing, but I'm not really having a lot of difficulty keeping up with it. 
It does have a score streak thing, but I'm not exactly sure if there's anything more to the multiplier than simply just keep killing. And that's all you really do. And strategy-wise, it's a case of, oh, well, when you get the double fire rate, you probably want to equip the minigun. When you get the chain lightning, maybe you want to equip the shotgun and all that sort of thing. Pick up the power-ups on a fairly regular basis, everything explodes, and things will probably turn out fine. Very, very basic experience. I mean, when you look at Crimson Land, for instance, not the remake of Crimson Land, but the old Crimson Land, that game came out, like, over 10 years ago. But I think it might even be 15-plus years old. And I'm pretty sure that game actually offered more variety than this did. Oh, I am dead. How unfortunate. But I lasted 4 minutes, 33 seconds. Okay. So it look, didn't look like I unlocked anything. So I guess we go to new game again and see what other levels are available. It lets you access all of those levels immediately. There's only 5 levels? Huh. That's not brilliant either. So the idea is to survive and score attack all of them. Let's try Panic in the City. And I was hoping to see... Get a random power-up selection. There we go, yeah. Sure, why not? Let's just go with that. Let's switch out our weapons, SMG and laser gun. Where are the unlocks? I'm desperately hoping that this game has some, because otherwise... I have to ask, like, who would actually pay for this? Now, this is a genre that's been around for decades, and it has progressed quite nicely. There's some really great examples of games in this genre. And yet, I think in 2015, you'd probably expect a little bit more than what we're seeing right now. Which is a case of, shoot aliens until you die, get high score. You can boil a lot of games down to that particular basic element, I suppose, but... Frankly... Considering... How little is going on otherwise, you've really got to flesh that formula out just a little bit. I'm trying to figure out what this whole distance indicator is here. What's going on with that? On the previous level, it was just counting kills and scoring and things like that. Now it's saying distance. And we're not spawning any more monsters. So you think, oh, you know, I have to travel a certain distance. All right, you go this way. Ah, so this is a level that you actually have to walk through. Which is a little odd, because it gives the impression that it's arena shooter, and then suddenly we have a level where you don't shoot in an arena. That's fine if it was if it made it a little bit clearer, I think. It's like, well, what's this distance indicator and why isn't it moving? What am I supposed to do? Nothing is spawning. And then you find a bunch of invisible walls until you find the one area that actually allows you to travel through it. I suppose I can give them some credit for adding a little bit of variety into the level design like that, but usually good to tell people that you're doing that. Since they built up a certain expectation by playing the first level. This is going to be one of these instances where people say, Oh, well, I've seen all I need to see after about three minutes of gameplay. And that's fine. I mean, if, if you think you have, then by all means, tune out. But I do like to give the game a little bit of a chance and see if there's anything else going on with it. I, I don't think there is, though. I really think that this might be all there is to it. And it's a very, very simplistic top-down shooter. It doesn't, doesn't seem to offer anything new in any way. This is the sort of thing that you might make as a prototype and release a, under a freeware license or something along those lines just to kind of cut your teeth. I don't think it's the sort of thing that you would charge $5 for, which the studio is. At least they're not charging more than that, but still. What else is there? You've got some fairly anemic guns. No gun pickups, which I think is a huge mistake. I really think that giving a loadout to you at the start severely limits how interested you remain in the rest of the level. As opposed to something like Nation Red, where you're consistently picking up and trying out new guns. And you're also having to try to manage which guns that you have at any given time. I mean, ammunition really isn't an issue either. There's no pickups for that. And maybe you could get away with it if you had a huge gun variety to select from, so you had a reason to keep going through the levels trying out different loadouts, but you don't. You have what looks to be three primaries and two secondaries, and that that's it? There's gotta be unlocked, surely. Surely you would not 
make a game like this without having that. And that just seems to be an absolutely absurd omission. Can you even finish this level? I'm not sure if it's even... It seems like it's rotating and copying terrain and making you go through the same areas multiple times, but the terrain looks so generic, it's really hard to figure that out. It's just grey buildings. It's got that little black stroke around the characters. Just to give you the impression that it's pseudo cell shaded when you know for a fact it's absolutely not. It's often a way of disguising a lack of artistic design and real cogent aesthetic. It's a little bit of a cheat, really, for the most part. But I think the term mindless shooter is maybe overused, but if, it, if there were to be a game where it was appropriate, this would absolutely be it. Because there is no strategy involved in it. There's barely any skill involved in it. Sure, you can die, but it really comes down to not paying attention. Dodge move seems pretty reliable. But most of these enemies don't really have much to them. There's not a great deal of difference. Some of them shoot, some of them do not. And occasionally you get explosions and all that sort of thing. It's always nice to have a good amount of enemy variety so you have to keep altering your tactics and continuing to learn. Not really getting much of a feel for that here. It's mostly a case of bigger enemies, smaller enemies. This one explodes in acid and so on and so forth. So I suppose it's unfair to say it has no enemy variety, but it certainly seems to be lacking a little. Also, I don't think... Is there any other form of health pickup other than that power-up? Because it seems to me if there's not, then going into a level without that health power-up is really, really silly. So I think the only power-ups I'm seeing are the ones that I chose, and I'm not sure if the random selection actually picked that. I don't think it did. I don't think med pack or healing should be a power-up that you have to choose. That seems like the sort of thing that should be default. All right, well, that was that level then. So I guess it's go as far as you can until you die. Personal high score. Yeah, there's... No unlocks at all, I think. It doesn't even give you a list of power-ups here or anything along those lines. Seriously. I mean, even playing this in co-op, I think I'd find this pretty dull. All right, let's try the Alien HQ then. Yeah, so we went into this without any power-up. I suppose we'd try the last weapon that we haven't tried, which is that one, and we go back to the minigun. So if we change that to heal, which is, it's just ludicrous that that would be something you have to pick. The portals are spawning enemies in never increasing number. Try to keep the number of portals down while navigating the maze of force fields. Well, I suppose I can give them credit for having a different mechanic every level. But there are very, very few levels available here. Oddly enough, this level looks a little bit better in terms of the aesthetic. I think it's probably just the color palette they're using rather than the sort of generic gray city. Yeah, this is it. This is this is what the game is. And as opposed to 15 minutes of game, I think you'll probably get the hang of this in about two minutes of game. Very, very simple. Not really the sort of thing that I think I am compelled to play any more of either. Because really, what else is there to do other than try and beat your high score? Can I unlock anything else? Well, it doesn't appear that that's the case. And usually, if you have hidden unlocks, the best thing to do is sort of tease a player with it. Say, so after the first level, you get an unlock, and that makes it clear that, oh, I should keep playing in order to get more unlocks. But there was none of that. The only really positive thing that I could say about it is that it has a subjectively reasonable soundtrack. Which I'll let you listen to for a little bit. Also gives me an excuse to not talk. I guess it's really a case of whether or not this is to your taste or not. 
I mean, it's nothing to write home about, but it it sounds reasonable at least. It's not like it's got a selection of terrible music. Yeah, this is really, really uninspired. There's nothing on offer here that isn't being offered in a far, far better form by other games. I wasn't a huge fan of the remake of Crimson Land, but it's miles ahead of this. And obviously, I think my favorite game in the genre is Nation Red, which I would certainly urge people to try out, because not only does it have a fantastic soundtrack, but it's pretty great in terms of its gameplay as well, and the amount of variety they have on offer. All right, then. Well, that's Xenocide, I suppose. I think you've pretty much experienced the whole game there, by the looks of it. Would I go back and play it? No. Uh, I think it's safe to say that I would not. That's really all there is to it. This is a very, very shallow experience. This is not something that I would pay for, really, under any circumstances. Especially considering that... It's a genre that's been very played out by this point, and I think if you want people to actually pick up a game in this genre, you've got to do something a little bit special or do that genre incredibly well. And this game is neither of those things. If I were to suggest how to improve it, I would say, look at Nation Red, do what that game did, only either better or do something a little bit different. Just put a little bit of a spin on the formula. Because this is the bare bones of a game that really doesn't have anything to write home about any aspect of it aesthetically in terms of its sound design in terms of its gunplay i mean great gunplay could have got me past a lot of the faults that i've got with this but it doesn't have great gunplay it doesn't really have great anything so there you go 15 minutes of xenocide possibly 13 minutes more than you might have needed my name's been total biscuit thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time